Okay, everybody, here is a quick demo of GenKit. So GenKit is an AI integration framework and I've built a very simple app here. So what you can see is that I've imported GenKit, I've configured the GenKit AI instance using the Google AI plugin and using Gemini 2.0 Flash. And I can now run this application and then show you how this looks like in, um, in this um, browser window here. So this is the developer UI for GenKit and you can see that you can work with models. For example, I can take a look at the list of models I've got here and let's use Gemini 2.0 Flash and try something out. So let's, who is this character? And let me add a piece of media. So this is the Firebase mascot. So let's see if the model is able to answer this question and apparently it's not. So let's improve this by providing a system prompt. And there you go. It's Sparky the Firebase mascot. So this is nice, but obviously you want to do something that is more serious than uh, talking about the Firebase mascot. So let's try something different. So one thing that everybody hates to do is their expense reports. So let's see if Gemini can help with that. Let's open this invoice here and then try to extract the details from it. Um, extract the expense details. So this looks great and um, it's actually correct if we look at this invoice. So um, obviously <laughs> this is wrong. <laughs> Hamburg is not in the United Kingdom, but all the other information is correct and Gemini was able to extract all of that. So let's see if we can do more. So I can use append mode and then um, add another message. And um, how about this one? I'll add another invoice. So this is the flight I took and let's run this. So now this is a chat conversation that we have with the model. And here we can see the breakdown and this is all correct. Um, and it was able to extract all those details from that email. So when I came back, I took a taxi, so let's take a look at that as well. So this is the third invoice here. And you can see that this is sideways and um, it is um, handwritten and it's really hard to read. So let's try that as well. Um, how about this one here? And it was able to extract the correct amount and all the other details here. So really, really well. Um, now let's see if I can get um, the total amount. Well, not quite. So maybe we need to be a little bit more specific, but also doing all of this in the developer UI is not 
what you want to do in a real application, but it's really nice for um, experimenting and uh, prototyping. So I've actually built um, a full application that can take your expenses and your, your, exp your invoices and turn them into um, um, a trip report. So before I walk through the code, let me show the results. So if we go back to the command line, you can see that when I started this application, I got this output here and you can see that um, all of those items here actually reflect all those three invoices I showed you. So we've got the hotel, we've got the flight and we've got the taxi. And as you can see from from those amounts here, this is all correct. And the interesting thing is that all of those amounts are normalized to euros. And you might remember that the hotel was in great British pounds. So I told the, uh, the AI to transfer all of that to uh, euros. So let's take a look at the code. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually load the files and inside this flow that I've defined here, I've got this action which I invoke with ai.run and it loads an expense file and there is really not much magic in here. So we're getting um, the file name, we're converting um, it to lowercase and then we try to figure out is this a PDF file or is this a JPEG or a ping file so that we can correctly set the MIME type. And then we turn this into a base64 encoded uh, data URL that we can then pass to the model. So that is the first step. The next step is to actually call the model and pass this URL and you can see that we're using a multi-part, multi-modal prompt here and the first part of the prompt is the media and we're passing in this data URL, the space64 encoded data URL and then uh, the second part of the prompt is the instructions to extract the expenses from the following files. Another thing that I'm doing is I pass a schema, an output schema, and this output schema is defined up here. And this is what helps the model to know what kind of information I'm interested in. And as you can see, I specified a number of attributes that I want to extract from the invoice, such as the category or the amount and the currency. And I specified more details using this describe method here, which really allows me to provide some details as to what this is about. For most of those um, fields here, this is pretty obvious. For example, um, the amount, that's obvious. But if you think back to the invoice, the, the hotel invoice that I showed you, it, it actually did have two addresses on them. So the first one was my personal address the customer address and the other address is the address of the hotel. And for the invoice, I'm not so much interested in my um, personal address, but I'm interested in the hotel address. So that is why I provide this piece of detail here saying, I want to know the city of the vendor, not of the customer. Okay, so this is the schema and we're using the schema to tell the model how to return the data. So after all of this took place, we return the output and this extract expense, expense uh, flow is here for just a single invoice, for just a single file. So let's go back to, uh, to the developer UI and try this out. So the application is still running in the background and I can now use this flow here, the extract expenses flow that I just showed you. And then I can pass in the name of a file that I want to analyze, invoice1.pdf, hit command enter. This will run the flow and then we can see the result. And here we are. So this is the hotel invoice. We can see the address of the hotel, we can see the amount, we can see the currency, which is British pound and the date and a lot of other stuff. 
So let's take a look at what actually happened. So we have our flow here. The flow invoked the load expense file action and you can see well, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to show us the base64 encoded URL, but instead the developer UI renders this as, um, as an image here. So this is really nice. It's a little bit hard to see, but um, you can see that this is the, the invoice. And then in the next step, you can see that we're passing this to the generate call. And again, you can see the input, we pass the URL, we pass the text, and down here you can see the output and you, you can see that um, it has all, all the details in the output. And here is the, the actual call to the model. And again, in the output you get a lot of details. Here's the response for example. And down here you can see um, the usage metadata, for example, how many tokens the prompt contained or um, the total token count and so on and so forth. So lots of details here. All right, so this is reading one PDF file, one invoice, but we had a couple of invoices, right? So let's go back and take a look at how we can use this flow and call it for all the, all the files that I passed. So here we have another flow, the generate expense report flow. And this actually takes an array of uh, files. And what we do in the first step is we're passing all those files to the extract expense flow to perform the data extract, uh, extraction. So the result will be an array of expenses. And then we stringify those expenses and we pass them to another model call. But this time around, we're not using ai.generate like we did in this previous call here. So up here, we used ai.generate to directly call the model. But instead, down here, what I'm doing is I load a prompt from an external file and then I call that prompt and I could call it anything, right? So I could call it, um, you know, expenses prompt. So that makes it easier to, to tell this apart. You can use um, a meaningful name here. So I'm calling this expenses prompt. And what I do is I pass in the stringified version of this array of JSON objects which represent all the expenses. And then I return that. Let's take a quick look at this prompt file. So in the prompt file, we've got a little bit of front matter. And in the front matter, we specify which model we want to use. We also specify a tool that we want to use in order to convert the currencies. And then we specify the input schema. And in this um, specific instance here, it is a string because we're, we're going to pass in a stringified JSON object. And then here is our prompt, generate a, a report of the expenses from the following input, make sure to normalize the currency to euros, use ISO date format, include the total amount of expenses in euros, return the report in markdown format with the table of the expenses. And then we've got a handlebars variable here, which refers to the expenses that we're passing in here. So back here, um, we can see that this is exactly the variable that we're using in the prompt. So expenses is the variable here, and that is what it's called here. So we're passing it in this way. So let's go back to uh, the UI, go to the generate expenses report, and let's reload this um, and type in invoice.pdf.
So these are the three invoices I had. Let's run this. And here's the result. Um, let's make this a little bit smaller so that you can see how beautiful it looks. And we've got the total amount of our expenses and all the details. Um, and you can see um, the original amount, the currency and the converted amount. And now let's take a look at the trace of this call because you'll see um, you know, it's very interesting. So for each of the files that we passed in, we have a call to our extract expenses flow. So you can see that we're passing in the, um, the invoice. It loads the file. You can even see the file here. Then it makes a call to the generate method, which calls the model. And then we get the response back. And you can see that um, here is the response in the schema that we defined. So this is the first invoice, and then here is the second invoice, the third invoice. And then we make um, another call to the generate call, and this is where we ask the model to generate our expense report. And now you can see that after we make this call to the model, there are actually a couple of calls to our get currency conversion rate tool. And you can see that the model wants us or wants the tool to um, deliver our currency conversion for, uh, for euros or for, for um, pounds to euros for this specific date here. Um, and well, this doesn't make a lot of sense converting from euros to euros. So that was not very smart. Um, but I think you get the point. So after we make all those calls, we can then um, generate again and we get the result back. And um, let's take a final look at the tool. So the tool um, is a function that we defined using ai.define tool. You can specify the name of the tool and a description and then the schema. And you can see that we have the base currency, the target currency and the date. And again, similar to what we did in our prompt, we specify a description of what those fields are for. And then we also define the output schema, which is a number. And here, this piece piece of code here, that is just like a regular API call. And I'm using an API to convert um, the, you know, from one currency to another currency based on a specific date. All right. So that is a currency converter. Uh, sorry, this is an expense report generator in just about 100 lines of code using Gemini 2.0 Flash and GenKit 1.0. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to upload this code to the repository and um, I might probably also write about this. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up for it. Um, subscribe to the channel um, so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.